entrepreneurship, technology and innovation in medtech. Hi everyone, so welcome to an interesting medtech world panel and today we're going to talk about entrepreneurship, technology and innovation in medtech. So I am Dr. Stefan Budzic, I am the co-founder at Digital Health Monitor and today I'd like to introduce you to three very interesting individuals. We have Prof. Russell Smith, who is a professor of entrepreneurship at the University of Malta. We have Dr. Conrad Attart, who is the deputy dean of the faculty of ICT. And we have, last but not least, Prof. Philip Farrugia, who is an associate professor at the faculty of engineering. So, like kicking off this discussion, uh, I'd like to ask, uh, start off with Prof. Smith. And uh, Prof, so how can we accelerate and scale up research in, in medtech, especially in Malta? Like, what is the practical way to, to do it? You, you come here with a wealth of experience. How can we get started? Well, I think it's quite a challenge in any university, in any country, in any region, because it's almost like a bottomless pit that you can throw mm. money into. So one has to be very clear about what are the objectives. I think okay. we're talking here about medtech and we're talking about technology and innovation and innovation for me really means converting ideas into invoices so let's be absolutely clear this is about a process whereby we take research findings that come out of academic research typically and are then converted into something of commercial value and that value is both for the owners of the intellectual property usually the employer of the inventor which is often the university for example but we need to make all of that work right through to the customer. So it's very much uh, a confused area where people think it is a way of funding research for research's sake. That's not the case. I would defend to the death the right of academics to do research, but this is a very specific type of research which has got to lead ultimately to a commercial return. And that means selling one of two things. There are only two things you can sell a product or a service and that has to solve a problem for the customer so that's what we have to focus on how can we accelerate by making sure that researchers are clear about whether they're doing research of a commercial nature or research just for the interest of research sometimes it's a confused picture Stefan yeah I think it's you know when, when you start this discussion you uh, explore and you see you mentioned the word bottomless pit and I really <laughs> appreciate that comment but like uh, looking uh, towards Conrad's experience now and Conrad comes from uh, from very interesting faculty which is right in the middle of, the, of all of this so what are your thoughts Conrad about this well I come from the faculty of ICT so it is very relevant to, yeah. to this area but I must admit that the faculty's uh, role is to reach out to other faculties and to address research in a multidisciplinary way and empowering other faculties with their own knowledge so that ICT is more relevant in the, in the area that we're working in. Uh, I agree with, with the way you introduced and addressed this, this, this the question that was been answered. Uh, I would have extended in that obviously research might have different stages there's the research yeah. which can be commercialized and the research is part of a puzzle, a web, which would need a number of international as well as local researchers to work together. And sometimes this can be challenging for us because we are giving a contribution but not necessarily always seeing how this might be translated in, in an entrepreneurial way and obviously be commercialized. But our ambitions are there. Uh, in fact, some of our projects reflect that, how we are working with industry and our industry is not only the IT industry where uh, the development of the systems are happening, but it's also the industry where we are actually working hand in hand with hospitals, with, uh, with uh, professionals coming from the different disciplines to learn more about this area and therefore be more on board and to collaborate even further. In fact, you mentioned something very interesting that which really caught my attention, the word puzzles. And uh, I think when I think of the engineering and ICT, I think they're a bit of a puzzle as well, and they mm -hmm. fit with each other. And, uh, so, like, Philip, like, from your experience, like, how did you see all of this fit? And you have uh, quite a lot of experience, actually, scaling up and creating puzzles of your own. Can you tell us more about them? Yes, sure. So, I totally agree with my colleagues. Um, actually, this area requires knowledge in various disciplines because yeah. 
a medtech product is multidisciplinary. In fact, our faculty collaborates with other faculties and also with a range of industries. Mm -hmm. um, and I strongly believe that to scale up the research in this area, we need to create clusters, especially when it comes to SMEs. Uh, in this way, we can also attract uh, foreign direct investment in this area because if people out there see that in Malta we have this uh, momentum, this critical momentum going forward in this area, of course, one would be more interested to take up some ideas and commercialize them internationally. In fact, Philip, you have something exciting to show us. Can you uh, show us? Because now we'd like to kind of see a bit as well. What's happening out there? Because it's useless talking, blah, 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 and mentioning that you have to do this. But in reality, what are the exciting projects that are happening out there? Maybe you can, you can show okay. us, Philip. I'm not yes, sure. sure. OK, so basically, this is one of the projects that we have. Okay, cool. Let's see. Hmm, I'm really curious. Oh, okay. it looks like a bird there. Can so you, can so you basically, uh, it's a penguin. It's a penguin. <laughs> oh, wow. So it, <laughs> was, it was developed as part of the uh, project, funded project for, for by the Malta Council for Science and Technology. Mm -hmm. And it's a therapeutic device aimed for children uh, between three to six uh, years who have problems in communication. And also, it is aimed to support speech language pathologists during their sessions in order to make the therapy even more exciting for children. You have to tell me though, who was your inspiration behind that? Uh, actually, it came from my daughter because oh, wow. at right. age of three, she uh, had some problems in communicating. Okay. And of course, as a parent, when I attended the sessions uh, during uh, the therapy, I have noticed that uh, she does, didn't have that uh, excitement during the therapy. Also, hmm. as a parent, I didn't have any means to monitor the progress that the child is, is doing. So with this device, it is possible uh, to monitor the progress that the child is doing between one session and another. Bellezza, like that's how they would say it in all these, and I would say it now. Uh, but you also have like some really small thing that you have managed to bring with you. Uh, uh, this is, on the other hand, a very small device. Wow. Uh, it goes at the tip of the endoscope, yeah. which goes inside the human body, mm -hmm. and it is made of two different materials. Usually the process was uh, done into stages. Yeah. So first you assemble, sorry, you first you produce the inner component, which mm -hmm. is uh, an optical component, and then okay. you uh, mold around it the, the other part. And we managed to produce that at one single shot. So you can see over there. So it's, it's a very small part. Uh, it's good to mention also that at an uh, international level, we are collaborating in a, a 4 million European project it's called okay. Prime VR2 project. It is mm -hmm. an ongoing project. And the, the aim of this project is to uh, develop a bespoke controller to help people during the therapy in mm -hmm. a serious based environment. environment. So that is our, our aim. And we have three target users. We have people with um, dystonia, uh, people who have suffered uh, injuries due to sports, and also uh, post-stroke patients. Wow. Wow. Simply wow. And, uh, but now, actually, I know someone else who has some more interesting projects as well. And Conrad, maybe you can tell me more about it as well, you know? Especially in, in the medtech, like what, what, are you, what are you up to? Like some so we're shifting from children to elderly now because... Oh, <laughs> uh, the other end of the spectrum. Yes, yes. So one of the major projects which I lead is PEM in, in healthcare, uh, which mm -hmm. was recently shortlisted as uh, one of the best uh, practices that will be shared with, with the European Union about how uh, we can conduct research in a particular way. Okay. Uh, it basically focuses on the quality of life of both carers as well as, as, as the, the, the people with dementia. Uh, and therefore, uh, we are addressing the early stages and even the stages which follow on personalized health. So per personalized health okay. through pervasive computing contributes to learn more about these, the, the, the people with dementia, allowing us to help carers to take more informed decisions. So that's the interesting project, and we're doing it by creating an open access data set, which will allow the community uh, uh, of researchers that are working uh, in different parts of this, this type of research to have another tool to be able to conduct the research. That is only one of them, because PEM is the big umbrella of a number of the different mm. initiatives, uh, which include obviously how then we will adopt this, this open access data set, which will allow us to create tools 
such as uh, uh, having a uh, surface top which allow carers to see and understand through different history patterns what the pa people with dementia are going through. So that's a, a major challenge that we're trying to address. Yeah, I mean, even considering the increasing burden as well of mental health in uh, today's world and dementia being also a very important aspect of all this is very, very critical, like we went from one end of the spectrum to the other. But Prof, I think what's interesting about you when you come to looking at research project is that you have an overview. You're starting to see, you're starting to explore anything, any interesting projects, maybe something you're working on then that we don't know of, yes, maybe some hints. Well, I think the, the first thing to say is I find it quite humbling listening to Philip and about the way in which he responded to the problem that his young daughter had. Uh, God bless her, and I hope that it's helped. And I think that this is what we're talking about today. So yeah, let's exactly. make no mistake. The use of engineering and IT in particular as uh, technology to make uh, a way forward for people with a challenge, I think is why we need to be here. And I think that's a really important thing to say. So what do I think in terms of projects? I think we have, with the example that Philip showed us, a clear example of a product. There may well be in the, the, the various things that Conrad was talking about, a number of services. So we have to be clear about what it is and what that problem is that the person has, who can then come into the group of customers. Okay. So first of all, customers. What do we mean by that? Well, there are three components to that that we all need to realise. They are the buyers, the brokers and the beneficiaries. And in our area, in, in the medical area, sometimes the beneficiaries, the patients, aren't actually the buyers. It's provided for them. So we have to be clear and come back to this idea of the puzzle, the jigsaw, how all the pieces fit together. So our research as trying to look carefully at what are the pieces that need to be fitted into the system. And it is a system. A lot of people talk about ecosystems, okay. and it's not a phrase I'm particularly happy with using. I prefer the environment within which the enterprise operates. Funnily enough, being professor of entrepreneurship, entrepreneur is a word I don't like either, in the sense that this is a word in French, means in between taker. So mm. hardly Richard Branson at Virgin. So I think there's a lot of misconception. And the first thing I would say where we're working it's really important to take forward is to ensure that everybody who comes through your departments understands the process of entrepreneurship, enterprise, mm. the environment, how it works. So ultimately, I think that those of us in academia who have the privilege to teach and to do research are going to be effective in commercialising something that can benefit others, such as the device that Philip just demonstrated. So for me, the active area that we're working on is creating a model that will allow people to do this using software tools to help them make that happen. So our bit of edutech will revolve around that. So a long answer to your question, Stefan, but I think mm. that this is all coming together now in the way that we're not part of different systems, mm. we are within the system and we have mm. to make sure that becomes integrated and effective within the environment. In fact, when you start talking about these things, uh, Prof, I, I also start to wonder, you know, because I see a lot of potential in MOTA. And, uh, and what are the strengths and uh, missing gaps for to take MOTA to the next, uh, you know, to the next level? And, then, and how would you contact that within the next five years? And I think you are the the right person to answer this question here. So we start off with you, Prof. Okay, well, look, thank you. I, I think the reality is, is that we are making progress and we're uh, putting in place a number of initiatives that are helping make all of this happen. So this is by no means a challenge that I don't see can be you know, overcome in moving forward. It's true to say, however, that in Malta, um, the financial position uh, is less well developed than in other countries. For example, in England, where I came from, uh, and the companies I led from the University of Oxford, we were very privileged and fortunate to have a lot of finance available for investment. It's not the same here. So we need, and I'm not to detract from what Philip said about attracting you know, investment from overseas, uh, but I would like us to see us developing investment within Malta mm. in a more tax effective environment. So there are okay. things that we can do to help encourage investment 
uh, that was certainly done in the UK uh, 15, 20 years ago. And there were things that we could follow and, and build on. So for me, to do it properly, it's got to be planned properly and you need to know how much money you're going to spend. We currently, as academics, never have enough research in our budgets mm -hmm. to do what we need to do. So we need investment from outside. So rather than foreign direct investment, I don't really care so long as we get the money that we need. So for me, Stefan, the key thing is to getting the environment more um, friendly towards uh, investment. And not talking about banks here, they're not relevant. Not talking about venture capital, they're much later. We're talking about high net worth individuals, sometimes called business angels, people who can help uh, individuals like Philip get that product which is clearly important onto the market. Okay, thank you. Two minutes each, Conrad and uh, Philip. Tell us what are your thoughts about this from your experience? Uh, yes, uh, I can say that uh, I agree uh, with, with Professor Smith about, what, uh, about this perspective. And uh, through, our, through the effort that we do is to spend time with Within this, uh, with individuals that can invest, uh, Pemex, an example, because it started off by an individual company who decided to fund the, this research and believed in it uh, through RIDT, and we have even a structure. But then, uh, obviously, there are a number of gaps that we are addressing. One of the gaps which we try to need to do is how to, uh, and we're translating it into a deg degree course in, in digital health, is nice. to address this gap and design with uh, the practical aspect with the idea of having a good dose in this in this degree that individuals that 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 will uh, participate or come to attend this course will also live the technology be motivated not only to replicate what exists but to find the new ways of how to do things in a, in, in a different way it doesn't mean that we don't already do so I even can, uh, we're uh, experiencing even one of our students that is researching in digital health and in the degree of uh, uh, blockchain, okay. and he's already working so that that will become an IP with a co particular company so that it, it will be uh, at one point commercialized. Super. Philip? Okay, so building up on, on what my colleagues just mentioned, I think we need more funding, um, well especially when you were speaking yeah. about medical devices. Uh, to take this to market, you need certification. So it's not just having the funds for doing the basic research to investigate what your end users would like from your product, to develop the product, to test the product, but also um, that will be the last step, which I feel it's missing at the moment, to take it to the next level. Now, to take it to, the, to that level, you need a substantial amount of funding. So mm -hmm. if we scale up the level of funding, which uh, at the moment, it's good, but it's not good enough. It, it needs to be amplified. I think we can get towards that, uh, that step. It's also good to mention that uh, in recent years, I have, as an academic, I have seen a growing interest by our uh, students to pursue a postgraduate degree uh, in fields related to uh, medical products. So that is good because you are uh, equipping the workforce with skills required in, in this field, which, as I said before, it's multidisciplinary. Uh, another aspect which I think is, is very important is to address the gap, which is currently, uh, I feel it uh, locally, uh, when it comes to certification, to knowledge in Malta about how to certify a medical product, uh, how to uh, carry out a, a, a intensive in intellectual property search to ensure that there is uh, no product relevant to, to yours. Okay, so these are aspects which are uh, very important and I feel uh, this is the next, these areas which we need to address uh, in the near future. Yeah, taking that into consideration, I even had a recently uh, a chat with, uh, with Philip and it, to test even, not even on, to test on actually on animals, we're looking at nearly a quarter of a million to actually get there. So more funding, more innovation, more contribution, more communication, and I think that is what will be our ingredients for success in entrepreneurship, technology and innovation in MedTech in Malta. Thank you. <laughs>